we are very happy to be here in IIT Delhi today, where we are planning to set up a center of excellence. And it is really a big honor to be with uh, Professor Sarkar and Professor Rao. Professor Rao has been even the director in charge of IIT Delhi. Uh, sir, we would just like to hear from you. Uh, this is actually a recording for uh, our youth in this country. They just would like to understand what as a country we should do, where the youth should spend their time, where the technology is going, basically your ideas on that. So the, the, the technology uh, has, I mean the scale of the technology or the thought process or the idea of the technology has changed over the, over the couple of years. If you see the the early 90s to 2000, it was more about the information technology. And it is now the era of electronics. Uh, we have already missed one bus of electronics uh, early, uh, but now there's a second bus of electronics come, and uh, this is what we need to catch the bus. Uh, there's a severe push from the government of India on the electronics component part two, and uh, you're seeing a lot of policies that are being developed by, by MIT and other government agencies. Uh, to bring in the fab uh, is, is a challenge and it's a very critical thing that they need to bring in the fab. What I believe is that once the fab comes in, once the fab sets in, the ecosystem for the for the development of electronics will kind of exponentially grow. One bottleneck that we have right now is the fabrication part and once that is solved, uh, the electronic component uh, developmental activities will grow uh, in a rapid pace. At this point, the country has sufficient technical know-how. They have the expertise. They have the experts working on it. The, there are certain gaps in the in the chain, in the supply chain. Uh, I think once those gaps are fulfilled, uh, you will see the real real growth uh, in in the electronic industry. Uh, then you want to come up. Uh, yeah, right? Professor Rao, uh, in your view, like what is the role of telecom in the development of this country, and how we are placed, or how at what stage we are as compared to the rest of the world? In fact, India, if you notice, is now ranked second in the world when it comes to the handset manufacturing. And uh, But much of it uh, is uh, at the assembly kind of a level. But I think we have the potential in academic institutions to go one level below and start developing technologies for the mobile phones. For example, at IIT Delhi, Professor Mukul Sarkar works on image processing technologies. And though some of them today are for niche and defense applications, but eventually with a little bit of tweaking, they can they can go into the mobile phones. And similarly, for example, I have spent at least 10 years of my time in developing the electronic nose platforms. So now if you look at a mobile phone, you know, it does many things that we humans uh, do. It can see things, excellent mobile, excellent cameras are there. It can hear things. It can, you know, touch sensitivity is also pretty good. But one thing a mobile phone cannot do is it cannot smell things. So can we develop as, as the next level of innovation, electronic nose platforms, integrate them into the mobile phone. So mobile phones can be used, for example, you know, for security applications like sniffer dogs. What a sniffer dog would do, you know, tomorrow a mobile phone should be able to do. I think these sort of innovations are definitely possible. If you look at Indian academia, you know, there are three aspects to any academic institution. The one is education. That is where the knowledge is available to disseminate that knowledge to the students, that is where our institutions are doing a very good job in IITs, particularly, you know, when you think of education, you think of the highest level of that, the teacher student kind of uh, interactions and, uh, you know, the delivering that knowledge to students, all that happens very effectively. The second aspect is knowledge generation. And that is again, India is doing very well. You know, in terms of knowledge generation, India is now ranked second in the world. So as per the National Science Foundation, US data. The third aspect, which is innovation, that is where we are lagging behind. That is where generating value for knowledge is what is innovation. Then academia industry value for knowledge is absolutely essential. Unless academia and industry work together, innovation is absolutely essential. Unless somebody has to take that knowledge, convert that into wealth, convert that into products, integrate them into mobile phones and, and generate future generation of phones and other appliances. I think that is where this kind of a you know, collaboration between uh, IIT Delhi and telecom sector skill council and then establishing centers of excellence and then taking this knowledge, taking this innovation, applying it to the mobile phone kind of platforms. I think that is where you know exciting things can happen. 
Professor Sattar, uh, you have actually worked many, many years abroad, various countries. I think mean, you've seen manufacturing and everything. But my specific question is, like, as far as Skill India movement is concerned in India, the work which is happening around skill, how do you rate, how do you place it as compared to which is happening around skill? Where, which are your suggestions? Well, the scale of skill development that is required in this country is substantially large compared to the European countries. They are small countries. Uh, and also the population, the, the diversity in the population is quite large. So the amount of training, the amount of uh, skill set that has to be ingrained is, is quite different, quite drastic. Also, if you do one-to-one -one comparison between India and, and the European countries, I'm speaking more of European countries because that my experience, uh, I live there, is that they have an option. Uh, they have a choice to to do to build on to their skills. Whether there's a financial security, there is a, there's a lot of uh, secure environment over there. Right. In India, the financial security does not exist, so it's kind of a compulsory that they have to design and develop some skill sets for for them to survive. So there is there is a difference, right? Uh, but because of the diversity and uh, it is it is challenging sometimes to provide the skill set, different skill set. The, the candidate, the student takes the time to understand what what are the fields that they're interested in. Uh, I think what we need to do more from the policy perspective as well as the technological perspective is to give them the time to, to spend spend in that field, understand whether they really want to enjoy it and are they really enjoying it, whether they would like to take that as a career or not. I think in Indian society, we don't give them the time at all. We just push that, okay, you have to do this and many other people try to do that because of the compulsion. I and mean, somewhere down the line, if you see that compulsion uh, does not result in, in something very you have fun. We have to make skills, make engineering more fun. Now, once you make engineering and skill more fun, and then we see a rapid uh, development and rapid change in the in the perception of, 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 of students and candidates. Uh, Professor Rao, uh, you have uh, really seen uh, academia for such a long time. Actually, we see most of the things from uh, industry point of view. Uh, Prime Minister Modi has really driven Skill India mission and actually the kind of work which is happening. I think from our point of view, you know, like we are trying to do many things. But from high tech and academia point of view, what is your views on it? Like what are your suggestions? How we can do better? And especially, you know, like in coming times, if India has to become a world power in manufacturing and also into trade and economic, what all we should do? What's your suggestions? I think that the key to that lies in translating knowledge into wealth. I think a lot of knowledge is getting generated, but uh, but because we lack that uh, those strong academia industry collaborations, much of this knowledge remains in academia and doesn't really see you know the the societal kind of application. So I think in India, if one thing that needs to be corrected, in my opinion, it is this you know bringing academia and industry closer. I think once that happens, I can tell you, you know, a lot of great things will happen because there is a lot of, uh, you know, talent in academia which is untapped right now, which is yet to be explored. And if you think of the best people, the best brains, where do you find them? You come to IIT, I can show you, you know, some of the finest people working on some of the greatest technologies. But I think if they are not, uh, if that knowledge is not utilized, you know, for the societal benefit, you know, they will continue to do good work and they will continue to publish, generate that knowledge, but the society will not benefit from that. I think, you know, time has come for us now to bring academia and industry closer, set up centers of excellence, which are funded by the industry and which orient to the academics work towards, you know, things which are of relevance to the society. And that way we all grow together. I think uh, these partnerships need to be win-win at the end of the day. And now academia has the confidence as the talent pool to turn them into a win-win collaboration. You know, it need not any longer be a kind of a, you know, you, 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 you do that because you are asked to do it kind of a thing. I think eventually everybody will benefit uh, through these collaborations. I think, you know, if we can create the center of excellence uh, with, uh, with the uh, telecom sector, uh, skill council and with other industries that you are connected with and if we can, you know, work on those technologies which can have a huge impact, you know, in some of these uh, mobile phone uh, uh, companies and sector, I think that will you know, make India the superpower one day. So. Thank you. Just one single suggestion if you have to give, how should India make uh, skill aspirational? What should we do? I think you have to put in more fun into it. 
Right. You know, a person needs to enjoy. I mean, we are we are doing work at IK Delhi because we enjoy it. We are able to generate knowledge. We are able to do state of the art work because we are enjoying it. The day you take away that fun from us, right? Uh, probably will not be that productive. Uh, in any environment, I mean, skill development and stuff, you have to make them, make the, give them the environment, give them the comfort that they are able to make choices and they are able to enjoy it. So, Dr. Rao, what is your suggestion uh, to make it aspirational? No, I agree with uh, what uh, Professor Sarkar mentioned, but uh, another thing also is, you know, Lakshmi and Saraswati you know, should be seen together. Exactly. You know, most of us, for example, Professor Sarkar has two growing deep technology startups and which are now, you know, beginning to make an impact in those sectors. I have two uh, startups which are again doing very well. In fact, our, uh, we have Nano Sniffer from one of my startups, which is an explosive detector technology, which should replace all the explosive detectors in the airports sooner or later. And similarly, another startup of mine, which is in soil sense, which will, should revolutionize the agriculture sector. All that is happening because now we are seeing Lakshmi and Saraswati coming together. Otherwise, we have kept them apart. The industry's job is to make money and then you know sell things and and uh, kind of everything. Academia's job is to keep generating knowledge. But I think these two things need to come together. I think for skill development and skill training kind of things become uh, you know uh, sustainable in the country and seen as attractive. I think we need to bring uh, all these sectors together. And show those kind of you know potential of uh, you know that sort of a potential uh, to the to the to the aspirants so that you know they want to do that and uh, then make India you know self-sufficient eventually. What the Minister Modi says, the Atmanirbhar Bharat. I think it will happen only when when all academia industry works together for the benefit of the country. Thank you, and I think it was really a wonderful to talk to such learned professors of IIT Delhi. I think the points which they have given are really very, very important for us. I think mean, it will be our player at Telecom Sector Skill Council to get their time and also, you know, their guidance in making telecom skilling really world class. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Definitely really enjoyed.